We're now in part three of our fastidious gram-negative bacilli lecture. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about the organisms capnocytophagia as well as those in the HACEC group. So the HACEC group, it used to be very easy because the H stood for Haemophilus and the A used to stand for Actinobacillus, the C for Cardiobacterium, the E for Echinella, and the K for Kingella. It still does stand for those organisms. However, for the H or Haemophilus, the organism that was more, was the H for the HACEC was Haemophilus afrophilus. However, you recall in our part two of this lecture, we mentioned how Haemophilus afrophilus was renamed to Agrigatibacter afrophilus. So this organism is no longer a Haemophilus species, but it is a closely related species. The A was Actinobacillus actinomycetes tomcomitans. Now, Actinobacillus uh, got its name changed to also to Aggregatobacter. Now, this keeps it easy because Actinobacillus and Aggregatobacter are both an A, so the A in the HACEC still is fine. Um, Cardiobacterium ominis and Echinella carotidans and Kingella species. So these five organisms make up the HACEC group. So in general, these are opportunistic organisms. They don't normally cause disease, but they will if, if it's an immunocompromised individual or in the right opportunity. They have slower growth. It takes two to three days for these organisms to be seen on growing on an agar plate. They have very small, compact colonies, and these organisms do not grow on McConkie agar. So in your week one lecture notes, you have a chart that lists all of the common media, supportive, selective, differential, tells you what ingredients they are. You should go look at McConkie agar because we are going to be talking about McConkie agar a lot from this point forward. McConkie agar is very commonly used for the gram-negative rods, and that's because McConkie agar inhibits the growth of gram-positive organisms. However, there are some gram-negative organisms that will not grow on McConkie, and the HACEC group is one of them, or five of them anyway, and there are several other organisms. So for those of you that are making a chart, that should be one of your chart categories, organisms that don't grow on McConkie, and right now you should be putting in HACEC, because even though they're gram-negative rods, they don't grow on McConkie. The HACEC group organisms are oxidase positive. They require CO2 for growth, making them fussy. They have a predilection to attach to heart valves, which is why they are common causes of endocarditis. And they more commonly cause endocarditis in individuals with heart disease or that have damaged valves or that have had valve replacement and have prosthetic valves. And again, these are organisms that are normal flora of the oral cavity, which is why they tend to cause endocarditis, especially after any dental um, procedure. Now our H in our HACEC group that used to be Haemophilus afrophilus, which is now Aggregatobacter afrophilus. This is the most common cause of endocarditis out of the organisms in the HACEC group. The organism is a pleomorphic teeny tiny rod or cacobacilli, or they can be rods. They're non-modal. They ferment carbohydrates, specifically glucose, maltose, sucrose, and lactose. They are oxidase variable, meaning they can sometimes be positive or negative, so oxidase is not a very good differentiation test. They're catalase negative. They reduce nitrates to nitrites, and of course, they are normal flora of the human mucous membranes. And here is um, what is was formerly called Haemophilus afrophilus, which is now 
Agrigatobacter afrophilus growing on a sheep blood agar plate. The next organism is Agrigatobacter actinomycetomcomatans, which is again normal oral flora in humans. It this organism does not routinely cause infection in humans. It is an animal pathogen. However, humans can be accidentally infected due to contact with an infected animal. In the laboratory, these are gram-negative small rods, and they, they are cacobacilli. They can be very tiny rods. Uh, on agar plates, they tend to form what's called star formation, kind of looks like a star in the center of the colonies at 48 hours of growth. In broth, the organism tends to be a very granular organism. If you shake the broth, it looks like granules in it, and it adheres to the sides of the tubes. It is non-modal. It is a fermenter if you add serum to the media, so it requires serum to ferment carbohydrates. It's catalase positive. That It also has a variable oxidase, and it is negative for urease, indole, es esculin, and citrate. And we are going to be talking about all of these tests when we talk about the Enterobacteriaceae gram-negative rods because all of these tests are important in differentiating the gram-negative rod organisms. So here is Agrigatobacter actinomycetomcomatans, or what used to be actinobacillus, growing on a sheet blood agar plate. And if you were to really look at this under magnification, you would see the star-shaped center if the plate were incubated for 48 hours. Cardiobacterium ominis is our next hay sac organism, which is normal flora of the nose, mouth, and throat, can also be present in the gastrointestinal tract, and this organism tends to cause mouth infections um, and can cause endocarditis, of course, after a dental procedure. More commonly, it will infect the aortic valve of the heart. Um, the, in, in the laboratory, this organism is pleomorphic, changed, it can be varied in its shape and size. It's a gram-negative rod, non-modal. It can tend to be falsely gram-positive, so it doesn't decolorize that well. It will form rosettes and swellings. It can grow on blood agar and chocolate agar. Again, it's a fermenter, but you need serum to enhance that reaction. It is ox oxidase positive, catalase negative, indole positive, and negative for urease, nitrate, gelatin, and esculin. And again, we will talk about all of these tests in detail when we get to our Enterobacteriaceae organisms. And here is Cardiobacterium ominous growing on sheep blood agar after 48 hours. Here is a um, gram stain of Cardiobacterium ominous showing those rosettes. So the organism tends to clump together in kind of a flower rosette formation. Iconella carotens is our other HACEC group um, organism, and this is normal flora of the oral and bowel cavities. It's usually mixed with other flora, such as your streptococci species. It is a common cause of infection after trauma. So Iconella carotens is very common, it's a very common cause of infection after a human bite. So if two people get into a, f a fist fight and one person bites another person, because Iconella carotens is a normal flora in the oral cavity, it can get into that bite and cause an infection, especially in individuals that are immunocompromised. Um, it also is co a common cause of clenched fist infection. So individuals that might clench their fists very hard and their nails puncture into their skin, it can cause a clenched fist infection. 
It is commonly a cause of infection after dental manipulation and also after surgery. So approximately 45% of Iconella carotidans will pit the agar or corrode the surface of the agar. It has an odor of bleach, and again, I already mentioned, we never smell our plates. We do not sniff plates, but um, any characteristic odor will is a differentiation feature, so it does have an odor of bleach. It's non-modal, it's oxidase positive, and it is non-sacrolytic. It does not ferment, it does not utilize sugar in the presence or the absence of oxygen. This is similar to the Moraxella um, catarallis organism. It is catalase negative and it often produces a yellow pigment. So here's Iconella carotens growing on chocolate agar and it tends to pit the agar as it grows on it and kind of looks like it corrodes the agar. And here's a gram stain, typical gram negative rod. King Ella species is our last organism in the Hayseck group, and the species include King Ella kingi, King Ella denitrificans, and King Ella oralis. These are normal flora of the upper respiratory tract, especially around the tonsil area. They are cacobacilli to short rods. They exist in, in pairs or short chains. They are non-modal, but if you were to do a, met, a wet mount on these organisms, they would look like they were twitching. They're oxidase positive, catalase negative, and they will ferment glucose. And here is a gram stain of Kingella. And these are, you know, larger. They can be small, they can be medium shaped, they will chain together so they look longer because of the chaining. Now we're going to talk about another organism, not a member of the Hayseck group, but it is a fastidious gram-negative rod and that is Capnocytophagia. This organism used to be called DF1 and DF2 before it got named, which DF stands for dysgenic fermenters. Currently, the Capnocytophagia has seven species. Five of them are normal oral human flora. These require CO2 for growth. Um, so you, clinical specimens are going to be incubated in a CO2 incubator so that you don't miss some of these fastidious organisms. It is a common cause of septicemia in granulocytopenic patients, so patients that have very low granulocyte counts, granulocytic white blood cells, are highly susceptible to capnocytophagia infections. In the lab, these tend to be long, thin, tapered rod. On agar, they tend to be flat and irregular in shape. These organisms are non-flagellated, but they can seem to have a gliding motility on a solid surface. So on agar media, they will glide across, in, across the agar surface. They are adherent on agar, so they they tend to be a little difficult to pick up off of the agar and they have a yellow to orange pigment. They are catalase and oxidase negative. And here's Capnocytophagia on chocolate and you can see that gliding motility, how it spreads away. It seems to be moving away from where it started to grow. And here is the long slender gram negative rods. And now we're going to move on to the fourth part of the fastidious gram-negative rod lecture.